Welcome to this bonus episode of All About the Archers. I'm Philippa and I'm joined by Quentin to chat with Ronnie Jutty, who plays the one and only Ardil. Ronnie, welcome. 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 <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm just bemused by poor Ardil because when he was introduced, he closed Grey Gables. The next thing, he's meeting Kathy dressed as an Easter bunny. What was it like to get started? It was, it was wonderful in a sense, really, because it was it really was hit the ground running with Ardil. And I really enjoyed how he immediately had this other facet to him because in a sense, on the surface of it, yes. He came in as a, as a very sort of unknown figure to begin with. He checked into into the hotel to stay there and, and he was having these sort of quote-unquote meetings with Oliver and yet nothing was sort of reported on dramatically in sense of what was going on in those meetings. No one knew who he was. And, and so there were a lot of question marks, which was a wonderful way to start because it certainly got the conversations going in the world of Archer's fandom and all of that. And that kind of whetted people's appetites, really, and got them thinking. And then once it was revealed that he was actually in these talks with Oliver to take on board the lion's share of Grey Gables from Oliver, who was stepping away and taking a much smaller active part, then it began to transpire gradually that he was on behalf of the money people, as it were. So he wasn't he wasn't with the deep pockets, but he was there to redevelop Grey Gables. Ronnie, you, one should always follow the money we're told that is one of the big questions here i mean we know oliver owns 40 percent of gray gables the other 60 percent remains a mystery and you're their front man are you the front man to the gills we need to know this ardil is not he is the face of that development but it's not his personal money that is that 60 no. percent, which was very much part of those question marks that were coming up initially so to go back to what you'd originally asked to then get the other facet of him really getting involved with easter which was immediate for me because that's what was going on in ambridge and immediately he was oh I'm really interested in that. Oh, really? There's local local farmers and local restaurants, and I'd be really interested in all of that. And he was immediately beginning to get himself involved locally that thankfully developed this, this part of him that eventually developed into him staying in Ambridge and befriending more people and, and really getting to know where he was as opposed to just being there as you say, as the front of this business venture and have nothing to do with the people of Ambridge, which which often so happens in the world of business. Well, so, so I, yeah, so I, that's why I, he jumped I, in a bunny suit. I know you've straight batted that, even though Ardell isn't a very good cricketer, so we, we still don't know <laughs> if there the girls are the 60 percenters. The, the other thing we must ask, it's a bit of housekeeping as well, Ardell. Um, I called you Ardell, oh. I mean, Ronnie. Uh, is it Ardill or Adil? I mean, this is the big question on the mm. forums. Yes, it is Ardil. So, so an R. Not that you're feeling sorry for him, but that's <laughs> what is worth keeping in your mind. However, as I have always said, names like so many things, because of how they're formulated, do shift as accents change regionally. But yes, Ardil is is the place to be. Did you know <laughs> how big a part Ardil was going to be? Because he, he's very important now. I was I was given an inkling that it was a new character that they wished to bring in and that he would very much become part of the woodwork, as it were. But who knows, really, from understanding and judging the kind of arcs and trajectory that characters have had in the arches. We are, we are looking at a, at a world that has existed for 71 odd years. And in, in that sort of light, um, what does six months or a year or five years or 10 years mean. So I believed so. But of course, I, I was very much of the belief that I would be more than happy that he was purposeful and he was involved and he did have a development through the time that he would be there, whatever that actual time frame might eventually be. But so far, it's, he's really begun to work himself in and it has been developing for him. But as listeners... We're fascinated by Ardell because we just get little windows. We just get mm. to know you and then they pull you back. Uh, we found out that you lost your wife at uh, a young age as a character. You, you've yes. spoken about your mother. Uh, as I just alluded, mm. we've discovered that you're no good at cricket. 
But so we start, oh, we're getting to know more about Ardil, and then they shut the window again. And interesting, yes. We want to know more, Ardil. <laughs> it's, if I suppose that's, I mean, that's a wonderful thing to know because if forums and the listeners and the audience, who it's for really, as as much as we enjoy and love playing and being part of that world and developing it for the audience, it's that's wonderful to know that if the audience are feeling that, as long as that doesn't become an irritating bugbear that they think, oh, there's no point listening to Ardil because he's never going to tell us what we really want to well, know. you should just be demanding um, more lines, more scenes, Ronnie. That's what we need. I mean, I don't know. I, sometimes I have the feeling that that sort of reticence and him being very functional in a sense and business minded and, and, and getting on with the job at hand and keeping the personal away has probably benefited him as a character, as a person throughout life. And then, yes, we begin to get these little snapshots of his grandmother having this wonderful farm and him being aware of this dairy farming and cheese production as, as much as he then hops into an event and starts doing the Gay Gordon's dance and sort of saves the day with that or, or whatever singing he in the shower. try to be doing. singing in the shower as well, Ronnie. And, and singing horrendously and playing cricket very badly. Um, <laughs> You've got a very good and, voice, and, you know, apparently. Linda's horrible <laughs> to you. <laughs> very rude. And and then gets involved with the, with the choir. And then he's also had moments where you think, oh, might there be mm. uh, a moment where he's gotten to know Kirsty? Oh, no. Might there be something yeah. Uh, yeah. somewhere else? And we don't. And so I, I, I suppose I'm kind of enjoying those snapshots. And then there's something that is sort of fed through, hopefully in the right way at the right time. Um, even if it's tragedy or concerns that he's had when he's been able to open up as he does with Lillian regarding the tragedy. But then that's come off the back of another moment where Ardil's been sequestered, as most of Ambridge does by Linda Snell, into, <laughs> I don't know, somehow being a fortune teller at the fate with Lillian. And then there's that wonderful moment there and then ends up sort of driving Ruby off to being sort of operated upon and saved while these are away. Mm. So there's a lot of those interesting dynamics that go on. And then, yes, there's just a little flurry, a little colour of what else might be there. And I, I suppose as long as, yes, as long as the listeners aren't getting frustrated by that, then I'm quite enjoying the, yeah, keeping the, them mean. The mystery, yes. Yeah, yes. Ronnie, you mentioned the scene when Ardil recounted his memories of making cheese and it made me remember some of the scenes you had with Helen and Tom when they were trying to get you to take their cheese. And I found the scenes, a lot of us did, so humorous. And I wondered how much fun you have had with some of the scenes in acting them out. Have you had some laughs? I loved enjoy. I really loved the scenes between Ardil and Linda. I mean, to me, immediately... There are there have always been scenes because in a sense they couldn't be more opposite, and yet they completely get each other and know how to operate on on the other's level, and so there's something inherently similar in terms of what their <laughs> needs and desires are as human beings. And I constantly think of entertaining Mr. Sloan, and I always do mention that to Carol when I'm recording with her and I go, oh, here's another entertaining Mr. Sloan moment, you know, <laughs> and, <laughs> and again, it can be a, an innocuous conversation over whether he could have a sandwich made for his lunch <laughs> or whether he'll be requiring something at a certain time or, <laughs> or his room getting cleaned or something like that. But actually then it, it inadvertently links into something else but they do actually operate very similarly. And that's been wonderful because other things do develop between them as we've just recently recorded. And yes, how these, in a sense, these opposites completely get each other. So that's certainly one. And yes, even with scenes like the scenes about the cheese with, with Tom and Helen, even, even though the business part of him is saying, look, you, I was expecting you all to come back to me with a deal and, and give me your plan mm. and, and basically be on it. And you haven't. I may have found Celia cheese. He, he can then bring something personal and go, yes, I, I am aware of being able to create buffalo cheese from my grandmother's farm so so yeah th those are enjoyable moments and and again likewise with oliver 
I just yeah. have some wonderful scenes yeah. with Oliver because again the dynamics yeah. between Michael and myself are, are great because it's, it's in a sense again essentially they work very similarly however again generationally they're different and would quite yeah. approach things perhaps in a slightly different way but come come to a point mm. where they're both trying to get to it's just how they get there I just want to ask you as an actor because it is different isn't it being an actor in a radio drama than obviously a stage or television mm. you, you're stepping in and working with some of the real greats in, in radio drama, aren't you? People, some of those actors have been doing it for 50, oh. 60 years. What's it like to go into that rehearsal room, that studio with these radio greats? It's incredibly humbling working with actors who are accolades, not only within that medium, but within that genre. Mm. And, um, and of course, like us all, I have done various other roles as the years have sort of progressed. And it is the old saying of you up your game with those around you in the room. And that's the same on stage and that's the same on a film set. So, so that is nothing to be frightened of. It's something to really embrace. And that's been the wonderful element of working with all of them. And yes, it's, it's a very welcoming environment and that really helps. And it's the whole of the whole of the team enable that to happen. What have you learned from them? I've certainly got a sense that they embed their characters and have obviously had the opportunity to do that to the point where they have a they have an understanding of how they might feel and, and how that then relates to the things that they might say. Mm. And that's been a really interesting learning curve for, for me as an actor to go, OK, if I'm if I have only been there for a year or, or just over a year or something like that, as I have done, I can start considering what I have said and how I've been asked to present that so that as a, a one willing times go on and I develop, I'll be able to go. Actually, this probably wouldn't be right for Ardil to say or or. I have an understanding of how that would be so so that there is that sense of effortlessness and being able to go, actually, this needs a different colour yeah. or a different thought to it because you've spent that time to embed it. So there's certainly that element that I come home and go, mm. wow, when you get these scripts now, have a real look and think about them and think about what you've done before and think about how that was directed and what that meant. And actually, the other thing is listening back to shows, listening back on the omnibus or at certain points and getting a sense of how certain storylines for other characters are being directed and are being positioned. Ronnie, as much as I want to be asking you about the future for Ardil, I know we can't because there's so much coming up with the reopening mm -hmm. of Grey Gables and all the theories. But what I can ask, and hopefully you can tell yes. me, is more about what happens on a normal recording day. How does it give us an insight mm -hmm. into what goes on? OK, so there's more than one episode that's recorded in a day and they have their slotted times to record. But essentially, you arrive at the given time before recording. And first of all, we will meet to have a read through uh, amongst all of the cast members in that particular episode with the director, not the writers. Unfortunately, they can't be there all of the time, but obviously with the director with the with the producer of those particular episodes for getting timings on the readings and we do a read through of that to get a sense of how long the episode is running there are usually within the scripts some predicated cuts possible edits if if the timing's over running and then if not sometimes there are additional edits to the script that the, that the director may want to already pop in for various reasons whether that might be for story reasons or just timing or things that aren't simply as we were just saying don't particularly sound right or there's a sense of having heard them in the rehearsed read through that don't quite fit or make sense so then those changes will come into play so we're all aware of those and then the director will decide on the order of the scenes to record them and that usually that can usually depend on, on various elements, but there'll be an order to recording. We don't record in order, uh, consecutive chronological order of the scenes. And then uh, the rest of us wait to go in and record our scenes in the studio. Just the characters that are in those scenes when you're in the recording studio. Um, we do read with scripts in hands, if, that's, if that is something to know. And, and we're also very lucky. We have all of the props 
and most of the movement and most of the actions done for us by the one atmos and background sounds that are being fed in whilst we are recording simply audio in the studio itself so sometimes we might be allowed or asked to open and close a door we might even be asked to take a sip of something rather than that happening for us or perhaps do a do a bit of typing on something but that's quite rare and right uh, and those moments are quite sacred or they have to be helpful obviously to the prop team because simply they don't they're not they're not like octopi they don't have lots of (laughs) arms and so there's a few things like that so other than approaching into a scene physically or leaving it's the words that we focus on so if you're chris or amy or brad or mir or stella or pip do they get to kiss the back of their hands or is that done for them ah yes the kissing of the back of the hands is always allowed um, for, okay. for the actor, so that's definitely because uh, we're, we're allowed on, that. I don't know what that says about actors, but there we go. Right, because on on the forums that that elicits a group. People just don't want any anything icky like that. Have I just given that inner secret away? Then? No, any kissing offend- sound, any hanky panky. We're we're very prudish. It's particularly Philippa, and yeah. So just if ever you get to kiss the back of your hand, Ronnie, just know that thousands will be going. Ooh. They might take comfort. In, in knowing that it is the back of the hand now that I've given that secret away. I don't know if I've... Uh... No, I think many of us knew that, but we're still... Philippa still uh, blushes see. if she hears that. Yeah, There yeah, we yeah. go. So I, I don't feel too bad then. With your career, though, and all that you've done, sort of TV-wise particularly, you must have already experienced all the online analysis that goes on, the deep dives that fans do. Have you been, been looking at it as much with the Archers as with other things you've been involved with actually you obviously grace me with far more social and internet aptitude than i absolutely possess uh, and anyone who knows me will know exactly what what i mean about myself so thank you for that i'll take that uh, even though they'll be probably throwing something at the podcast screen right now going do they not know anything about Ronnie? So thank you for that. But yeah, no, I, I probably haven't spent as much time looking into responses to things and how things have come. Probably a bit, but it's been interesting to do that with the Archers because the Archers has has this world online. And I suppose that's the world that it's become part of because it's on the radio as opposed to there being a television review or a a review for a film, for instance, or a theatre review, where you take that on board and then that's reflected with the actual audience being there or or sales of tickets and things like that. I have done a little bit more looking on social media with with the archers because of the different groups and getting a sense of what people are questioning perhaps or what they've been thinking about with that. And and yeah, that, that always gives a sense of it. With, with the fact that it's on radio and, the, and they may not have many other sort of forums to discuss. I've gotten a sense of that. And Ronnie, what do you make of us? Because we're a funny bunch, really. I mean, look at us wearing hoodies <laughs> with that on, for God's sake. <laughs> I kind of think it's, um, how can I say it? It's the greatness of the situation, isn't it? I mean, I suppose it's a bit like a player getting to, to, to play for a particular team and you go, hang on, just coming through that tunnel and stepping out onto that hallowed ground has so much history that goes with it and i think it's that it's taking that on board as a knowledgeable history of that situation it's my other experience of that was when i was blessed and charmed to do doctor who that and, and i'm sure there are various examples of other positions that an actor can be in where you go okay, I've been asked to do this, or I've been asked to take on a certain play and a particular writer's play or working with a particular director or what have you, or yeah, any of those things. So so the Archers very much has that sort of historical tenure to it as well that that is good to take on board. And it's, it's getting a reaction. In a sense, it's your reaction, which is the equivalent of if you're on stage and you think, oh my oh my goodness, I don't think that joke landed tonight. (laughs) Or I don't think they they understood this or that, or I didn't quite pitch that correctly or whatever. So it's it's always interesting to tap into and yes, just get a sort of sense of the temperature. Ronnie, we come to the last question because we'd love to talk to you for hours and hours, Uh but we don't have long. So we come Uh to the most, uh, for me, it's the most important question for you. So Please prepare yourself for this, Ronnie. And it is, who brings in the best snacks when you're recording? Which actor is the best at bringing in biscuits and snacks? 
Oh my goodness. He wasn't ex- expecting that, Philip, huh? <gasps> oh God, I now feel like there's there's obviously lots of Are you missing out on the case in the for the biscuit? Hat, then? Always seems to bring in lots of snacks. I'm just thinking. No one. There's no snacks. Someone's brought in snacks. Usually if he's gone out and he's gotten stuff and then he comes in. So, I mean, he, yeah, he'll come in. He'll go, oh, would anyone like this? Oh, I've just gotten this. It's wonderful. But I don't know if that, I don't know if that classes brings things in. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, people do bring things in if they're saying, oh, it was a birthday or something was going on. And I thought I'd bring this in for everyone. There's no regular, there's no regular oh. snack. So it's, it's not it's not like test match special. People send them cakes all the time. They don't send cakes into the arches. No, I love oh, cakes and pudding. So yeah. maybe that yeah. maybe that could maybe oh maybe that could work. Maybe that could be Ardell's yeah. next fascination will be baking. Maybe he'll be <laughs> like and then Noel Fielding come on. And go, oh, hello, Ardil. What, what's going on here then? And I go, oh, it's, it's funny you should say that, Noel. I've been trying to perfect. Brilliant. My lemon drizzle. There might just be a plethora of cakes that come in. I mean, it would what? beat socks, wouldn't it, at the end yeah. of every year? But, Ronnie, I really um, think you need well, to renegotiate you know, your contract to secure my rider cake supplies. <laughs> yes, what's going on, Ronnie? Come on. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I've, I've, completely, I've completely spoiled your last question, which I'm sure you were probably going to put in a wonderful montage of lots of names <laughs> of the greatest snack providers and I've gone I don't think Nothing. anyone does. <laughs> okay, we'll end with we'll end with one very quick question then. What's the best thing about being in the okay. archers? It is the the camaraderie of everyone and how welcoming everyone is and supportive. Every, everyone in the team is so supportive and is very much there for you. So that that really makes it feel really makes you feel part of it immediately and it makes it the best job in the world to constantly return to and and keep on going with really so yeah it's all all the love and care and affection that gets put in put into it from it's every lovely. member yes but also as an actor the regular work uh, yes exactly but again we come back to this conversation of it being 71 years what does regular mean um so at the, at the moment yes i mean I, i've been absolutely overjoyed that my my year i i started recording last february so for me it has been a wonderful progression that has remained steady and constant like anyone in the leadership of this country should be so there you go Ronnie, it is just wonderful to talk to you and to hear more about your work uh-huh. and more about your character. We can't wait to hear more about Ardil. I think there's a lot more fun yes. to be had. So thank you so much for joining us today, Ronnie. You're very welcome. Yes, thank we you very much, Ronnie. It's and, been great. And more cake, more, please. <laughs> more cake, And please. tea. Yeah. <laughs> Quite right. And I should just say, we'll be back as normal midweek for a midweek roundup of what's happened in the Archers so far. But Ronnie, thank you so much. Thank you.